Hello, hey everybody, Charlie here, and welcome back to another Project Pros 2 video. Uh, today it's just myself. Um, I'm just doing a practice session at Road America, and I thought, why not record it? I really don't uh, have a lot of content I'm putting out for you guys, so I thought I, I might as well. You know, it, it, it's it's good to see progress, especially coming for the IGL. This is going for tomorrow's race. I'm practicing. Um, I'm going to be using paddle shifters on my G29 Logitech wheel uh, for PlayStation and PC. And uh, we'll see what kind of times I can set. I do have to go to uh, to the bank in about 30 minutes, so this will be a sort of short video than uh, most normal Project Cars 2 videos are. But I hope you guys are okay with that. And yeah, so we'll, uh, I'll, I'll basically just be here to talk to you guys. Uh, while I'm doing the practice. Okay, here we go. So, Road America is a track I've won before in on in the Ifers. Um, Ifers, uh, in Ifers, I guess is just the correct way to say it. So, I do have winning experience at this track. Uh, but these cars are much, much different than the Ferrari series. They're much slower, much easier to control. But with them being much easier to control, you want to push them to their limit as much as possible, which makes it harder for the driver, uh, especially the faster drivers like myself. I don't really want to sound full of myself, but um, you know, I've won a few races this season, and I really try to push this car as hard as it can go. Uh, for majority of the corners, majority of the track, even last race uh, at Rodem or uh, Laguna Seca, I was pushing it as hard as it could go. So I'm just kind of doing a warm-up lap here. But the thing is, though, as I've realized, I don't need to push it incredibly hard every lap. But also, uh, during the last race, when I wasn't pushing it hard every single lap, I was really just trying to bring it home to the finish. Androx was closing on me every single lap to the point where he got to my outside and I uh, gave him like half a lane of room and he got into the rear end of me and it kind of caused just a little bit of drama. Um, we talked it over after the end of the race and whatnot and we're, we're all good. It's just kind of a racing incident. Uh, the end of that video uh, was just him hitting me and then me pit maneuvering him out of pretty much just spite. Um, but we're all covered up on that uh which which you know it's it, it's just it's kind of a, just a gentleman's act you know you don't you don't really have to carry that stuff with you um unlike some of the members we've had they like to carry some drama into the next races and that's totally fine but me and androx we kind of we've had events like that happen before where he's just blatantly spun me out on my screen but maybe not on his and t vice versa and it was just kind of one of those issues where he said I pushed him off the track, but on my screen and in the replay I was able to view, it was kind of vice versa. He kind of hit me in the rear end and almost put me over his nose. Uh, and that's and I was like, I was like full focus mode. My heart was pounding out of my chest at that moment. So all my only reply was, "You hit me!" Ah. <laughs> and he's like, "No, you pushed me." And I'm like, I, I just I had to try to stay as silent as I could to focus to bring my car home. And I could tell how badly he wanted to just absolutely bore me into that last corner. But uh, I'm glad he didn't. We were able to bring home the win, even though it was really his race to win. I uh, I fought hard for my position. I defended on the last lap the best of my ability. And we were able to actually bring home a win at Laguna Seca, which is our first win at Laguna Seca, the second race we've ever done there. Uh, I believe this will be the third race we've ever done at Road America. And I've won only one of them, if I'm correct. Um, but yeah, that was that um, that track was. I was surprised I won here back in season. I think six it was. Uh, I won here because I was fighting for the championship with Brady, I think, or I was fighting for the championship, and I really needed all the points and stuff I could get. Maybe it was season five when I was fighting with Jiggly. I'm not. I'm not quite remembering this correctly, but. I to do totally remember like fighting for the championship with somebody, and I was practicing hard for every single race. That's why I really I, like I won like by literal kilometers at Snetterton because I practiced so much there. I got the entire track down, and that was the same way with me in Road America at um, with the first cars. 
Um, but I didn't practice nearly as much when I was in the Ifrs cars at Road America as I did at Snedderton because I really tried to get that chicane down to get like my maximum speed out of it. And I seemed to actually nail it. So that was a good thing for me. Um, I'm just doing this right now because I didn't, I don't have anything to do for the next half an hour. Uh, other than, you know, really like read a book or something, but I figured I might as well get some practice in for tomorrow's race. Maybe it'll give me a little bit of a uh, leverage for tomorrow. This track honestly isn't incredibly hard with these cars. Um, though, though this car is very curb touchy, as I uh, found out last race in that Indy Road Course, uh, which was my worst race of the season so far, I believe. Uh, this car cannot handle curbs. It just cannot. It hates them. It never wants to see them again in its life. It's 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 just disgusting to this car. So I really try to use the curbs to my advantage in most cars, especially the Ferrari, but it's just not something I can do in this car, unfortunately. Uh, I can hit it like going into the corner, but coming off the corner, when I have my wheel turned right or left coming out of a corner, it just kind of hooks the rear end around and snaps me loose. That happened uh, a couple times actually last race, if you guys have seen that video, where I just kind of like coming out of a corner and I would hook the curb with my left rear or my right rear. And it would just hook me around, spin me into the dirt, and I'd lose time. Uh, and just because a single car spin on a road course does not count as a caution, because it's not like a... I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, it's not a... Like a danger, I guess, to other cars majority of the time. Because majority of the time they're going to be off the track somewhere you're out of the way. Um, but yeah, that's one thing that sucks about that. Is that it just I couldn't get a caution for it just because I spun out. It was pretty annoying, but that was also again me trying to push my car to its limit to like get it on those curbs and just just absolutely get the most momentum out of a corner as possible. Like that's exactly what you need to do with these cars because they are not that fast, uh, especially under cornering speed. Uh, but they don't lose grip very easily except for in the front uh, because they understeer quite a bit, even though they're not front wheel drive. But yeah, these things are some of the easier cars to drive, and that's why we switched to them, is uh, we wanted to have a more rookie-friendly league, where everyone was closer together, which actually, the racing really this season has been much closer together, noticeably, especially on ovals, uh, and some specific road courses. Um, maybe if we had had more people on some of the specific road courses, it might have been even closer. But uh, just in taking, for example, last race, how close the ending was. Like... That's how close these cars can be, and I mean, the Ferraris were too, but it's just that when you when you lose a little grip on the Ferrari, it's much easier for second place to just overtake you than it is for these cars too, because when you lose grip in this car, you're not losing that much speed. Um, in some instances, you might be gaining it, especially if you're like just drifting around the corner. I'm just going to try to focus here a little bit. There we go. But yeah, the thing is with this car is that um, I can really drive it with full grip. Like, I can drive the fuck out of this thing with full grip tires. But as soon as it seems to lose even like a millimeter of grip off the tires, it just feels so much more slippery and loose. And that's like like I had last race is where I started to drive it much easier towards the end because I was losing grip out of my tires. Or just over the course of 10 laps, like, I was losing grip, I was losing time each lap to Androx, and Androx was catching up to the point where on the last lap I had to defend per for position, block, and then block, and then he went to my outside with not enough room, nowhere he could go, uh, and I wasn't going to give him the room. Uh, so it kind of just ended up in an incident, which honestly, I don't think it was race ending for him because he, he could have taken it from me, but he decided to not. And you can see right there what I mean by the rear end hooking the curb. Uh, I came off that corner there, and the rear end and the front end got both on the curb while I was turning right. And it just hooks the car absolutely bonkers. Don't know why the car does that. No real car is going to do that to you. Um, not exactly. Well, I mean, I can't really say that because I don't 100% know, but I don't think cars just do that. Last time I checked. <laughs> But yeah, that's that's a, that's a thing with this car is that it's just very loose on curbs.
you can see here I'm going to get my rear end there, uh, but I wasn't in the midst of a turn and I also got off the gas. That's the best thing I can do, is get off the gas when I'm touching curbs. So I'm going to get on the curb here again, but you can see where it just, it just gets loose. It's like there's no grip on there. Um, I was actually pretty confident about going through there just because the track was so wide there that I, w I was pretty sure I wasn't going to spin out. But you can see where my wheel, like my wheel is pretty much an accurate representation of where my hands are at all times because my hands are literally there. Um, whoa! Uh, no idea what happened there. Uh, I think I just, again, rear end on the curb, and I'm not sure why that's suddenly happening, like just this lap, I'm just getting rear end, rear end, rear end spins. Um, thankfully I kept it out of the wall, I tried to just drift it through that corner, but this car does not have enough power unfortunately to shift down and just kind of like power it out of the corner, it just doesn't have enough horses uh, under the hood to do it, even though a real car with 150 horsepower definitely has enough horses uh, to do that. I have no, I just, maybe it was just because I was in fourth gear, but I just didn't bother trying it. But yeah, you got to just really watch your rear end uh, on road courses, especially with this car. Ovals are much, much easier, obviously. Um, but ovals are also a lot closer and a lot harder to win than uh, road courses seem to be, at least for me. Uh, and a lot of other drivers. Like, there's more to oval racing than you'll really think uh, when you look at it. But once you're behind the wheel of a simulation car, or just or even a real car, you'll feel the car slide and lose grip and... You'll feel where the car's best and worst and high lane and all that. It all matters. Uh, but a lot of people are, oh, they just sit there and hold the wheel to the left and drive it. But no, it, like, people who think that are literal idiots. I can't bring my brain around that stupid, stupid, like, ideal. Like, it's just not true. Here we go again. Best thing to do is just to, like, brace for it. I grip the wheel tight, I keep it in the gas or I let it out, uh, and I always try to keep the wheel as straight as possible, and I kind of wiggle it like that when I'm doing that, just so it doesn't like spin and I have the control of the wheels. Um, so that's the best thing I can really do, is just to brace for it, um, because some of these corners I have been going wide, uh, that one not being one. But again, that's one I could have taken faster, maybe. But also this car understeers, so it's it's really hard to hit this car on the head with hitting corners, a um, hundred percent of the time, at least. Yeah, that was a great corner there. Lots of speed, kept it clean. So Speedville is quite the weird carousel. I don't really like it that much. It's probably my least favorite part of the track. But if I can hit it correctly just like that, then it just feels so great. So this corner, I think I'm going to have to start letting out the gas the more I use my tires because of that curb there on the left. Just because I, I can get my left tires over, over it and it will send my car flying, just spinning because there's grass on the other side of it and not more pavement. Um, I wouldn't worry about it if there was pavement on the other side of that, but I really cannot have uh, my wheels going over the curb there. Um, but I, I, I kind of just race, judge the car lap by lap, corner by corner. I don't really be, be like, okay, so next lap I'm going to push it less, and next lap I'm going to push it less. I just kind of go, this corner, I'm not going to be able to hit it right. It's, I got to shift down more, I got to slow down more for the next lap, or like... Or just, just I just kind of judge it by eyesight, really. Like, when I'm coming up to a corner, I'm like, okay, so down here, uh, I probably can push it about this hard. And usually I'm right. Um, I don't know, it's just something about more about just be, like being in the moment in racing instead of thinking ahead or uh, reflecting back. It's just about, to me, being more like there. That was a great corner, locked her up a little bit. This car can do that sometimes. I find Brady has a lot of trouble with locking this car up. I don't typically have trouble with it, but uh, some people can. Going underneath the Sargento Cheese Bridge. 
So hopefully I might be able to bring home a victory this time. Maybe a little bit of a more well-deserved one than the last two have been. Not that I'm not happy I haven't gotten those. It just kind of... They felt a little, like, undeserving. So, but, you know, I'm always happy to get a win. And that's, that's really what it's all about at the end of the day is bringing it home uh, for the victory. Sometimes, uh, one thing with this car is, is you never want to overshoot the braking zone, because again, you'll lock it up, you'll just go flying into the corner. You really want to hit that braking zone on the point, or a little early. Uh, something I also kind of picked up on late at Laguna Seca was going to the first corner earlier uh, on the brakes is better. Uh, at least because I could do the crossover thing on Andrux and be able to pass him like I did there on the, I believe, last lap. There you go, you see I touched the grass there a little bit because this car is a right hand drive, something I'm definitely not used to, uh, especially here in uh, Canada, uh, cars being left hand drive. Uh, I know where my right tires are, but when, when it's opposite, my left tires, they don't feel necessarily the same. Uh, they're close, it, cl it feels close to, but like it's just not necessarily the same thing. But I am getting way more used to right hand drive cars just because of this game, really. Uh, just sitting on the right side, it just feels natural at this point like when I get in this car it doesn't feel odd but sometimes it's just like it's just I'm, I misjudge a little bit where my left tires are and I break into the corner a little early That corner is a fun corner. You can really take it flat out really through there. You can carry a lot of speed in there. This one's a little less um, speed carrying, but nonetheless, still a pretty nice corner. Great corner there. This might be a record time lap so far. And I am running the loose SMS setup. setup sorry. Um, so I, I'm wondering if maybe that's what was hindering me near, near the end of the race there last uh, last time we were at uh, Laguna Seca was maybe my tires were uh, wearing down faster because I was on the loose setup and I was maybe sliding the car more than I should have. Um, but it is faster for short ones and maybe that might matter here but it's going to definitely matter most at ovals because of the caution count at almost ovals uh, depending on the amount of people that is of course. Yeah, I just kind of turned it a little late there. Recovered it quite nicely, though. Didn't lose too much speed there. Speedville probably uses up the most tire wear on my left out of all the other corners in the entire track. So far, not been a bad lap. Definitely don't want to hit that left curb going into this corner here just because it will send me loose into it and again like I showed earlier spinning out into the wall uh, which thankfully I avoided that that time but many times before especially in the Ferraris carrying a lot more speed it will end up in the wall which is not good Right, looks like I'm having a great lap this lap. I'm 1.7 seconds faster than my previous lap, which is fantastic. Great lap there, best lap delta. So that must mean I have my best lap. My potential is a 231. Doubting I'm gonna set anything close to that today at least. I might be able to do that tomorrow if uh, I got more practice in. But, oh, but I'm not 100% sure that I can do those kind of times.
Whoa, wide there, wide there. It's gonna lap time invalidated. Um, that's not great. Don't want that happening during the race because I'm gonna have to slow down, and that is not what we want, um, obviously. It happens, again, a lot to Brady. Brady's been having terrible luck with these cars this season, and I'm around. My th that was a great recovery, though. I held it on the brake, cranked her left, and hoped for the best. Great recovery. That would be something I would not be too upset about during the race. Um, at least, uh, if that happens during the race. I mean, if I'm in the lead, I'm going to be more upset about it. If I'm in last place, I'll be like, that was a great recovery. But yeah, the uh, reason my head there goes through the headrest is because I have my camera all the way back, so I have the biggest field of view I can have. Uh, so I can see in my right mirror a bit, and just uh, to my right a little bit. Just my spotter can sometimes be a little unreliable, um, so I just have that like that so I can see around me. I'm gonna break hard coming into this corner here, second gear. I'm not going to get on the gas a little early coming out of it. Great corner there. Clean, no lock up this time. Coming through the S's here. It's got a bit of a left hander right here. Great. This corner is the, probably the most sh weirdly shaped one in the entire track because I feel like I can take it really fast and then it suddenly just gets really tight. Um, which is quite odd for most tracks, I would say. I'm going to do about one or two more laps here and then I'm going to end it. But so far I've been doing so-so, uh, I've had a few spins already, which isn't great, but I'm quite fast and I'm happy about that. So we'll see what I can really do, especially because my tires are underwear now. I don't think I'm going to be setting any um, record times, but we'll see what I can bring to the table with worn tires at least. Oh, there it is. I knew it. I got under the corner way too hot. Ah, fuck. And that's that's the kind of speed that's going to slow me down there is the second gear recovery because I don't know where my paddle shifter is when my wheel's cranked all the way around. I don't want to accidentally shift up too much and then waste more time. So I just kind of cruise out of it. Um, yeah, that, that was totally my fault. I got my left tire way over the curb there. Uh, definitely don't want to be doing that during the race. That's just... That was just a terrible fucking corner on my part. Don't know what I was doing there. Probably just wasn't awake, really, but... Uh, yeah, terrible. Terrible. Awful corner. Just because my tires are a little underwear now, I'm gonna just kind of... Yeah, there we go. Off a little bit there in that corner. Off. Honestly, that wasn't too bad. I didn't even have a slip, so maybe it's better to do it that way so I don't use as much tire. And I'll lock her up hard coming into this corner. Get on the gas coming out. A little uh, slippery there. Oof, curbs, jeez. So I'll do one more lap here. Let's hopefully not spin out this lap, have it just a good lap. But again, that's probably a prime example of me just pushing the car harder than it should go for some of these corners just because I'm trying to get good times. But that's really the way I drive these cars is I, I push it just uh, like as hard as I can go every lap just so I stay ahead. Um, but that sometimes doesn't work, backfires, whatever. Uh, but you do want to be fast at tracks like these. Um, 
thing is though is I, I could push harder but if I push harder it's gonna push me off the track it's gonna make me mess up so I try to just keep it at this rate most of the time if I push it harder I'd, I'll be sinking dead into these corners a nice corner there so watch this corner here this is also one of my least favorite corners coming up here just because it's so freaking flat so that was okay something that's corner I can not nail the same at all every every single lap that corner there is okay this one up here is coming up it's fine I don't mind this one at all actually uh, but then it comes up to Speedville which is just it just takes one hell of a toll on my tires. As you can see, my front left is quite worn down already, just over nine laps. Honestly, not too bad through there. I'm gonna see if I can just take her flat out through here. Ooh, yeah, you can see there, I got really close this time uh, while going flat out through there, closer than I have been uh, other times while going flat out just because I am losing grip there so definitely keep it in mind for the race I gotta let off coming into that corner starting to lock up my tires um, which is also eating up my tires not helping at all so it really is a matter of going easier on this car but still trying to keep it quite fast um, especially at this track and most road courses my foot just slipped off the brake pedal that is definitely a no-no never want that to happen ever not in real life not in the game that that's terrible. Never want that to happen. My foot just kind of hit the brake pedal and slid right off of it. And that's going to bring me home a 2 minute 31.901. What a time. That didn't even feel like that fast of a lap. But I did bring home a 231. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So with that, that's going to end my practice session for today. I have to go to the bank and make a withdraw for something really expensive that you guys are going to come see, you're going to see soon. I'm going to make some videos on my car, um, but I do need to spend a lot of money on it right now. Um, so yes, more real life car content on the way because uh, it's spring. I'm finally going to get on the road, hopefully coming th soon this week-ish. Um, but yes, I will try to get uh, some more content out, out of that for you guys and show you guys what I've done to it. And yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for watching me do this practice session hopefully it wasn't too boring i feel like i kept pretty good commentary through that entire video uh, over the 10 laps of road america practice and that's it thank you guys again so much for watching hit the subscribe button and the like button let's see if we can get this video to 10 likes that'd be great thanks guys uh and we're now over 70 videos of project cars 2 so thank you guys for the continued support on this series and my league and that's it thank you guys so much for watching love you all Bye bye